With me is my producer, Jay Wesley Lindley. Let's get mental. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hey Therapist. We are on episode 40. Ooh, I know. We so made it to 40. That's Who awesome. Thought? Yeah. Well, it's growing. We're getting there. That's right. And today, this is not Jay, but it's Lainey Jay. That's right. We are not Jay today. <laughs> what do you, is that what you go by? Like normally? What do, what do normal people in your real, real world call you? A lot of people call me Lainey. My okay. family calls me Joe. It's very few people that call me Fully Lady Elena, Jay. yeah. Or Elena. Yeah, don't call me by my government name. <laughs> I never have really been, except for work. Been in Elena? Know. Yeah. I, I just, don't see you. You don't. I'm telling you. Of the Elenas that I know, it, I don't picture you as Elena. Yeah, it's not. Um, I don't know. It's a little weird. I went by Josie in school until second grade. I didn't want to be called that anymore. Okay. I wanted to be called Elena. Well. So, yes. you know, grew up with Elena, but still, my family calls me Joe. My Why? mom gets mad at is me. That your, is that your actual middle name? My middle name is Josephine. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> the kids call me JoJo. It makes me happy. And now you all have her whole full name. That's but right. We can edit that out. There's of more, <laughs> but we're not going to go there. <laughs> Don't be Google searching her. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, you but you will find. find. You don't see. True. But they could find that you are the co host of the morning show. What do you guys call it? Okay. Jay and Laney J Love. Jay and Laney J Live. SEOKradio.com. SEOKradio.com. Yes, but if you're we'll searching on social media, it's KKBIFM. Okay. Whether it's TikTok or Facebook, YouTube, it's KKBIFM. Awesome. And you go live every morning? Yes. Or weekday mornings? Yes. From 6 to uh, six to 7, we have a request hour and we're just mm -hmm. on the radio. And then at 7.10, we go live on TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. And that's new. So how are you, how are you liking that? You know what? It's okay. It's actually pretty fun. <laughs> um, and I found myself, we have some regular TikTokers mm -hmm. who they're on every morning. And um, that's awesome. I found myself checking on one of them too last night. He uh, lives out in Durant. Him and his wife and kids. I was like, let me check on this this guy and his family. So I, I did. I checked on him too because I thought, oh no, these TikTokers are becoming important to me. <laughs> but they are. They are. I mean, they they become like you said. They watch every day. You get to know them ish yeah. in a way. And yeah. You look for them and yes. Well, that's cool. Yeah. It's. I mean, y'all got a pretty good following in the mornings too we do it's been really good and it just keeps growing that's awesome and it's fun it is fun it really is i'll hey, be happy when i can do lives on and watches us sometimes too I, she does yeah she's on there quite a bit i'm like oh no no not today's not the day <laughs> i have to be on your couch later <laughs> i asked jay i was like does she do private sessions i might need her <laughs> some not a lot i um i think i got well i did individual you know I, I was in private practice for a long time and mainly dealing with like traumas and helping people move through where they're stuck and doing all of those things and I did that you know full time by four days a week because I started at 7 30 and my last appointment was at 4 30 so I was making myself essentially work four tens I don't know why I was in private practice I don't but I, well I do know why because I only, I'm a one income household so oh, 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 <laughs> you yeah. do what you got to do but I didn't want to work Fridays so I worked longer days the other days and um, I think I just got a little burnout like myself I need to take a break because there is only so much uh, even for therapists, like if you are a well-trained therapist within yourself, then you can let it go. You can leave it when you leave work. You're able to walk away from it. But you also can only take so much. And when you're dealing with, because, I mean, mine was primarily, like I said, traumas and law enforcement and first responders and military. And there's only so much you can hear. That must be tough. And so you, you got to, like once when COVID hit, because I was in private practice during COVID, and when it hit, you know, a lot of people stopped going to therapy in the beginning, like mm -hmm. then they all needed it. But everyone kind of stopped because we didn't, no one knew what was going to happen. Right. And businesses were shutting down. I mean, I lived in the city area where it was taken seriously. So businesses were shutting down. People were being laid off. People were being sent home. They didn't know what that looked like or what that meant. But now they couldn't leave and do therapy because their kids are everywhere. And they're, right. you know, I, I had a, one of my clients would go in the closet and shut her door so she could have therapy because her kids wouldn't come looking for her there. 
I can understand that. I yeah, I, I probably would too. Right. So it was just it was, and when when it slowed down for them, it slowed down for me, and I realized I was tired. Yeah. Oh, I. Ooh, this actually feels pretty good. And the thought of doing therapy full time again in my life, I don't want. I don't want to. I, I imagine wanna. that it gets hard after a while because I've does. just listened to my friends, and I think. How do people have a therapist handle it? I mean, do, 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 does my therapist need a therapist? Because yes. it has to be tough. We all have our own therapist and we pass our shit to them and then they pass it to theirs. And they, you know, it's just, it comes full circle. <laughs> and then you have to, you have to think, okay, this person, I mean, then you have your own things that you're dealing with. Of course. With, and then you have these people that have these issues. I mean, mm -hmm. it's tough. Yeah. It, it's workable though. I mean, you, you can help people work through their stuff. For sure. Yeah. For sure. And sometimes the good thing is when I was going through something terrible in my own personal private life, like I said, I would talk to my therapist about it, but therapy was the distraction for me mm -hmm. because when you're there, especially doing, you know, cause I would utilize EMDR, I utilize ART, which is accelerated resolution therapy. And those things you have to be present for. Like, I can't be just drifting off. Like, because I didn't have a lot of people that just would come and just sit on the couch and bitch about their lives and go on. Like, that's not the client I would take. And I would even tell them when they came to me, you know, and I'm like, what are you looking for? And they're like, well, I just need somebody to talk to because this, that, and the other. I'm like, okay, I'm not it. Like, I don't, I don't want to be that therapist. I don't want to see you forever. Yeah. And so I chose to be in the trauma world but and every now and then like someone would come in and be like yes I need one of you so I can just be in a session and essentially tune out because all they really do is need to vent they just need to vent they need someone going yeah that sounds terrible here's some here's some coping skills here's some solutions here try this you know but they don't really need processing and they didn't need me to be fully present um, and there would be days where you know I would have people who were within processing and I would tell them listen I'm having a really off day like I don't we can't process today because I'm not with it enough because you have to be aware you have to pay attention to their body you have to pay attention to their language you have to pay attention to the shifts you have to be recognizing these cognitions and there is a lot to it you know I think people think therapists have easy jobs sometimes like when they because I've heard people say oh so you just sent less people talk sure that's technically correct. <laughs> like, yes, and. Um, so for those of you out there that think therapists have easy jobs, it's really, really not. Unless you're just a therapist that doesn't care. And then you can make it as easy as you want to. And you can take the clients you want. And you could have a roster full of people who really are just venting or talking gossip or whatever. And you'd just be right there in it with them. And, and But that's not therapy. Right. Like, why are you paying me? And, I, and I'm the, the person who would be like, okay, you're done with me. Like, stop coming to see me. You don't need me. <laughs> you know? It's good that you're like that, though, because I would think that many probably are not. No, a lot of them aren't. They'll keep seeing people forever. And I would get clients. They'd be like, well, I was with my last therapist for three or four years, and we never really. And I'm like, you you did what? Like, why? Why did you keep going to this person if they're not helping you? And one of the things with therapy, though, this is not our topic today, but maybe we'll make two. I don't know. Um, one of the things with therapy is if you're going, because a lot of people, well, I really like my therapist. Okay. We're not building friendships. Like, I have people who I have seen as clients in the past who I know all their business and their family and I, we kind of ran in the same circle, but no one would ever have known that I was their therapist because that's you know, professional responsibility to not do that. And I mean, I've had one that's, I've had since I was in private practice, so probably six years and every three or four months, she'll message me and say, hey, I need to check in and we'll do, I don't even charge her anymore. Like I just, I'm like, all right, what time you want to be, you know, and I'll just use like my lunch hour or we'll do it after hours and we just jump on and she kind of breaks it down. She's like, I'm struggling with this again. What do I need to do? And I was like, I really don't even charge her because it's just, I mean, it's really not even work. She just needs to reassure herself that she's still on the right track. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm good with that. And then we chit chat about the kids and we, you know, talk about about her life and in non-therapeutic ways which I think is why I don't feel comfortable even charging because she's always offered to pay she's like Are you sure? I'm like no I'm like because we worked on something for 15 30 minutes and then we bullshitted for the other 30 like yeah it, it, but that's what she needed 
So I guess I could, try, but I, I just don't feel right because I don't feel like I'm really doing anything. But for her, I am. She needs those check-ins. And like I said, it's been six or seven years now that she's been doing that. So and I mean, when I, I don't hear from her. Go ahead. No, I understand. I could see that too. But it's it's like you're a professional best friend. Sometimes. Or, you know, something a little, I don't know what you'd call that. But mm -hmm. yeah, I get it. Yeah, because you build that trust. You don't have, and I, I think the good thing about therapy is... It's a neutral third party. And that's what I always tell people when they're on the fence. They're like, I don't know about therapy. And I'm like, you're not getting real answers if you're going to your friend group. Because you're going to call the person that's going to give you the answer you want for that situation. Absolutely. <laughs> like, you may have four really good friends. And they all have a very specific set of skills. And when you need to go do some hood rat shit or you know you're making a bad decision, you're going to call the one that's going to co-sign on it. Absolutely you are. I would. <laughs> I do. I do too. Yeah. I mean, you can't help it. You know who's going to agree and who's not. Oh, I ain't calling them. I yeah, know. absolutely. No, I'm not going. We, I'm not talking about this in front. Don't you say anything to the rest of the group because I'm not talking about this to anybody but you. And it's, it's just that good third neutral party that can be like, stop doing stupid shit or yes, you're valid in what you're thinking. Yeah. If you're with a therapist for a long time and you don't feel like you're moving forward and you don't feel like they're meeting your goals, first have a conversation with your therapist because people also have this belief that we just should know what to do yeah. and what they need. And well, this is my issue. How do you, and I'm like, I, I need more background. Like, <laughs> yeah. let me ask some clarifying questions. But if you've told them and you're like, listen, I don't feel like I'm, you know, I need to move forward or I don't feel like this is resolved and they blow you off or you just keep talking over the same thing and not coming to a resolution, it's time to find a new therapist. Because there's a lot of us out there. And I always tell people, you know, in general and when they would come into my first session, like if I am not the one for you, because like I said on the last podcast and I've said it before and I say it to all my clients, we are like shoes. There's a million different kinds. We don't all fit keep trying until you get one and don't give up because a lot of people do go to one or two and they're like oh they just didn't fit me right that it okay keep going though because if you're seeking a therapist you need therapy don't stop right <laughs> you didn't just magically stop needing therapy you just got frustrated so ask for referrals ask your friends because i guarantee you there's a friend out there that's been in therapy or knows someone that's been in therapy they can ask their person what their therapist is like and you can go and find the therapist that fits your needs because it may not be the one that's nice and coddling and I am not the warm fuzzy therapist like I'm not the one that, oh my goodness pat pat like I'm like what are, you, what are you doing well of course it turned out like that <laughs> you made a terrible choice that's better than coddling I think so. I can't um you don't need people we don't need that especially if we're messing up right and a lot of times your friends will just coddle you. Exactly. Well, this is why you did this. It's all right. I would have done it too. But then when you have a therapist that's honest with you, right. like, hey, you shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. That well, You're wrong. You're right. wrong. You need someone to tell you when you're wrong. Yes. We all need that. And some, some people don't have that person. Right. So it's good for you to be that person. I try. But yeah, I don't, I don't want to do therapy full time anymore. Like, I like the consultations ideas. I like the coaching idea. Like being able to do those things for people in kind of the short term, but to sit and do therapy because I don't want to just do talk therapy. Like I want to do the trauma. I want to do the things because I know it makes a difference in people's lives. I know it changes. I just don't. I mean, I could if I had to, right? Like we all can. I, I, I know I can. And that's, you know, I joke all the time and I, li I like my job. Don't take this wrong, anyone. That's with, But I joke all the time. I found a job when I was looking for this one. Or fire me, I don't care. Like I'll I can step out and do private practice and make money until I found something else. Like I it's it's my fallback because I it's one of the things I will say I know I'm good at. Yeah. Like I can step out there and can help people and do the things, but I just don't I don't wanna I'm I'm tired, boss. I don't wanna I imagine. <laughs> I mean, I can completely understand that. Now right now I'm your therapist. That's right. No, no. you're my therapist right now. But I get it. You. I know it's gotta be I mean, I, like you said, you love doing it. Mm -hmm. And it's a very good thing to do to want to help people because people need that type yes, of help more sure. than what they are willing to admit. Mm -hmm. But I can imagine being, you need a, you know, need a break, need to pull back or don't yeah. want to do that. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm crazy now because of all these patients. Right? It, it, it does wear on you. And for the most part, I got into the routine of I have an, an electronic notebook. Um, it's called a super note or something like that. It's not a tablet. Like, it's one of the electronic notebooks. And I would, like, 
in my mindset, you know, I, I trained myself when I closed that notebook and clicked the pin in, I was done. And it's all in that notebook and it stays in that notebook. I don't carry it home. I don't take it with me, you know. So I kind of created myself a, my own routine of this is how I separate from this. And it's why I tell people who work in, you know, medical services or any high stress job, career, and it's usually the first responders, um, but military or medical staff, nursing, ER doctors, all of those people, or, or if your job is just blatantly stressful, you know, set yourself a routine, come home and get out of your work clothes. First thing, like make it a routine. I'm going to go straight to wherever I'm put my dirty clothes. I'm going to change out of work clothes. I'm going to put on house clothes, which separates me or you know, if you have to wear a badge for work, when you take that badge off and put it wherever you put it to keep it, if it's around your rear view or in your purse or in your car or whatever it is, when you lay that badge down, you lay work down with it. You don't take it home with you. You don't carry it with you. You don't have to. It's all ever, all of the stress of your work It was is within that badge. It's within those shoes. It's within your work bag, whatever it is that you carry. Like as soon as you get to set that down, you're done. You call it good and we leave it at at work which is not always possible, but if you set up those routines and you really create that mentality of I'm leaving this here, then it, your your brain will start to shift to that. Yeah. And and when you catch yourself going back to, oh, but that that patient or this client or whatever it is, you can go, oh, nope, that's, that's in my bag. That's a tomorrow issue. Like I can do the research tomorrow. I'll have time to, the, you know, because I know therapists and, and case managers or workers and People who will go home and start doing research on what they need to do for this person. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You have plenty of time in your workday. And if you don't, then better time management. But you should have plenty of time in your workday to block off that research time, to have that time. And right before their session or right before they come in or whatever it is, do your research. And I mean, if you have to reach out to other people, do it on that work time, though. And then you build those relationships and you you are still able to separate somewhat from it. I mean, there's going to be those things that haunt you. They just are. If you can separate out of it, then it's it's way better than just carrying it all and thinking about it all the time and just being so occupied with work because we spend the most time at work. Yeah. And if you don't get to enjoy your downtime, then what are you doing? Yeah. Sounds terrible. I had somebody tell me one time, you don't take your personal crap to work. Stop bringing your work shit home. <laughs> exactly. And I'm like, oh, gosh, I do. I was bringing it home. Mm -hmm. So I had to I had to learn not to do that. So what so, helped you? How did you get yourself in that habit? Do you remember? To just not talk about it. <clears throat> to just, you know, to stop talking. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. How you just stop, you just stop talking. Yeah. So I've done that for a while. Yeah. I just stop talking about it. Like, I don't even talk about it. Do you I talk get, about anything? I get in or trouble sometimes because I don't. I, I don't. I just... Okay, it's all in here. That's all we need to know. I got everything <laughs> all in here. I don't talk about it. I I was seeing a counselor, mm -hmm. not a the difference it's, in a therapist and a counselor. There's not, there's not a difference. They're very cross terms. Um, as long as they are licensed, they can be a counselor, a therapist, a mental health professional, a behavioral health professional. Like it depends on just what they call themselves and what other people are comfortable saying because some okay. people are more comfortable saying i see a counselor than a therapist like it's just but we're it, it's very interchangeable okay well i was uh, seeing this and it was a student actually mm -hmm. that i was seeing because they asked me if i wanted to see a student. I said, sure i'll see a student but i was she was just listening and i was just talking and i was figuring things out on my own mm -hmm. you know what i mean i possibly could probably still use some therapy i'm sure um but at that point in my life, I'm like, Ugh, I'm just figuring it out on my own. Right. I'm just sitting down. And, you know, you talk it out. And mm -hmm. then it's like, oh, duh. The light bulb goes off. I guess some people don't do that. But, you know, the light bulb goes off and you're like, okay, never mind. I know what's wrong. Yeah. I know what I need to do. I got it. I've figured it out. And that's true. Sometimes just saying it out loud to someone else. And, and I think having that neutral third party is best. But sometimes if it is that friend you know that's truly going to reflect what you need to see, then sometimes it is just saying it out loud and going, oh, oh I just heard that. <laughs> like, okay, this makes sense now. I'm going to stop doing that. <laughs> yeah. In my circle, I, I have one sister-in-law who she'll tell me like it is, but she'll get on board with me. My other sister-in-law is flat out, you're an idiot. 
and this is what you need to do. I mean, she is very, she will never get on board with you if it's not something you don't need to do. <laughs> so she's very, she's a good sound. I mean, she's great. Because I can say one thing and she's like, oh, hell no. I mean, she just, <laughs> she doesn't sugarcoat. She doesn't care about my feelings. It's good. like, this is it. And I love her for that. Yes. And we never get time to talk hardly anymore because we're both just busy. And, you know, she's got grandbabies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just, it's a lot. Sure. But I know she's there because she's been that way. They got married when I was 12. And she has been that way. That's my, awesome. My whole life that she's been in it. She's never, Good. never sugarcoated one thing. We do need people like that. We do. That are, that are honest but not mean. Yeah. You know, and that can just be like, uh, about that. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know yeah. if that's the best idea for you. Like Jay, Jay's honest, but he's mean. Sometimes he is. Yeah, he's like, Meh. you gotta watch him. Oh, gosh, you're right. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. Okay, I get it. I get it. You can stop now. Yeah. It's hurting. Yeah, it hurts. <laughs> right here. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. He's mean. It's all with love, though. I know. That's why I appreciate it. Yeah. It's good to have a boss like that. It is. It is. It's nice to have, have someone that, you know, may, may like you said, get on you and be like, bro, what are you, this, da, da. and then you're just like, yeah, you're right. I know. I've done that. <laughs> I've <laughs> come in personal. and be mad about something and then he'll, <sighs> <sighs> I'm not talking to you the rest of the day, but let's go, <laughs> let's move forward. <laughs> so it, it helps. It's good. Because that's the person I see every day. Right. You know, that, that makes a difference. And all you do is talk all yeah. morning. Yeah. You have to sit there and talk. Yep. Which does make it harder. You know, and I think it's one of those, it's like what I used to do therapy all the time. I would get home or friends would call or whatever it is. And, you know, because there was a time where I had someone in my life and they'd want to, and I'm just like, mm, can we just not talk? Like I have talked, literally talked all day. Like <laughs> I can't imagine that that would, uh, talking on the phone, mm -hmm. there was a point in my life where I spent a tremendous amount of time on the phone. Mm -hmm. I don't like it anymore. <laughs> it's hard to be on the phone. It is. When you I'm do like, it. Okay, what's up? All right, bye. I don't, I can't, oh, I can't. <laughs> I hate being on the phone. And Always message the lady, do not call. I mean, if you really need me, you can call me. But if it can be text, don't call. Yeah. I, I just, it just, I was on the phone too much. It just got that. I just spent mm -hmm. a lot of time on the phone. So, and I don't, ugh, no, I ain't doing that again. Yeah. So. It's hard. It, it is hard when you, and I would think probably there's days now where after the morning show and then doing the, all the things that you're just like, oh, I'm talking more. Mm -hmm. It gets like that sometimes. Mm -hmm. But it's okay. That. It works I still out. talk. I just don't talk about anything inner. <laughs> I don't talk about the innards. <laughs> The crazies. I talk about my hard, crunchy shell, not yeah. my sweet, soft inside. That's right. <laughs> Pineapple. Now, that could be taken a different, whole different way, though. I know. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. Ugh. You are kind of pineapple-y, though. Yeah, well, my friend. Spiky. And... Gemma got me a bracelet that's a pineapple. I was like, what the? I, I hate yellow. It's like, yeah, but you're a pineapple. Okay. She's like, you're tall and big and hard on the outside and super soft and sweet on the inside. I'm like, all right, maybe so. True. Yeah. I could see that. I love my pineapple bracelet. Yeah. But yeah. it was just weird. Just don't wear it upside down. Nobody wearing it. No, I won't. <laughs> I probably have a time or two. You're like, wait, which way does this go? Let yeah, me, I can't do it. Let me double check. I know one of the um, TikTokers said, mm -hmm. I got your bumper sticker today. I'm going to put it next to the upside down pineapple on my back glass. Oh. I was like, oh, so now I know why you two are the way you are. So, all right. I haven't had a chance to tell Jay that either. It was, it was pretty funny. Just That's gained just, new information. Yeah. I was like, oh, wow. I didn't need to know that. Are they but local? Do you no. know them? Oh, okay. No, no, no. They live in like Indiana or South Dakota or somewhere. So yeah. they're a local. That would add a whole new spice to it. It would. It would. <laughs> You're like, oh, no. We done heard this and that. You will put you on the list of all the other people we've heard that about. There are oh. quite a lot in that lifestyle. There, it's more than what I imagined. Like I, it was such a quiet thing up until what five, oh, six, yeah. seven years ago, and then now people are talking about it. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, you do what? It, it, 
threw me off. Like, well, I lived in Tulsa when I first heard that people even did that. Yeah. There's a whole bar. Uh-huh. That, you that's know, what I'll come see, too. Yeah. I'm like, what? They, that's all there is is swingers? And it's like, yeah, that's the, don't go to that bar. That's what they do. Okay. Well, and the true swingers clubs, because I have actually been to a swingers club. Just, I want to disclose. With friends, I did nothing. But I really wanted to go like when I found out their lifestyle, because, mm-hmm. again, it's one of those things you hear about, whatever. And then I'm like, he had said enough things that I'm like, wait a minute. So I cornered him and I was like, OK, I, I have to know. Are you all sweet? He's like, yeah. And so he tells me about it because I find it just fascinating and let me just say to any of those out there who are thinking about swinging don't it doesn't end well I've never known it to end well for any couple that really wants to be in a long-term relationship so we went and you have to like sign you so you have to be brought in by a couple that's already in the club okay and so they're your sponsors and in this little worksheet that you have to fill out like the the form to get you a pass they basically take responsibility for you. So it even says in there, if you've never seen this friend drunk, do not bring them. If you never, because if you, you better know how these people act because like if I would have went in there and acted up, then they would have been banned as well. Oh, wow. So if I wouldn't have followed the rules, then they would have gotten banned because they essentially co-signed for me. Like they said, we know this person, they're trustworthy, whatever. So you fill out this NDA and then you get this card and then you go and you pay your entry fee to get into the club because it has to be a private event, right? And this one is in like a hotel in Oklahoma City. They just have converted the one of the conference rooms essentially into the swingers club. And it was the strangest experience. Like, I don't, I just, I, and I am not a prude by any means, but it was the weirdest experience and I had just never been around it or uh, like we said knew people who were actually swingers and that were open about it and it was just it was odd there was just nakedness like just people walking around naked and like coming up to you and you're like sitting there and you look and then there's like boobs penis like just right oh hey hey nice to meet you now do they proposition you while you're there so they can ask the couple because you're that brought you that brought you so they don't directly like if you're sponsored by someone they don't directly talk to you they ask the couple if they can play with whoever so and the couples always like the couples that are truly swinging couples not just people they ask the partner can i play with your partner like they don't really ask you so if i wanted to play i wouldn't be like hey you want to go do some things i would go to whoever your partner was okay and be like are you cool with us going whatever and so it's a very it's a very strange dynamic but if they wanted to like if anyone wanted to do anything with me then they would ask the man of the couple that I was with. So then it's not, I uh, I had a roommate one time. Mm-hmm. She um, was going through this breakup and it, she had been with a man for a long time. Mm-hmm. And she told me that she was his slave, oh. his servant. And I was like, okay, well, you know, y'all, uh, okay. I didn't you understand. You like it, I love it. <laughs> it's the, the BDSM, the oh. BDSM mm-hmm. lifestyle. She was his... Um, he was her master. She even had like some sort of specific tattoo on her oh back. My. And she they lived this lifestyle where he controlled every single thing. And if they went to they would have conventions mm-hmm. and when they went to those conventions, people would have to ask him if they could play with her and they would do things um like she told me uh, about the whips they would do the whips they would do the candle wax those were the games they played it wasn't always just about straight up sex oh yikes so they played these games but if someone wanted to do that with Mm -hmm. her and her master wanted her to do it she had to do it oh yeah no this is so she got she got tired of that i would think so and then he controlled every scent he controlled everything she did it was very Ooh. almost childlike yeah and the people that helped her move into the house that we rented together mm-hmm. they had a it was a couple and they had a guy with them and he was their boy they were very much into role play i see and even in front of us they talked to him like that it was very strange it was That's really odd. strange she invited me to a few of their parties like no 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 hell no i <laughs> 
ain't going. I want to hear about it because I'm interested. Right. I want to know about it and how it works. She was collared. Oh. Yeah. Oh. She was collared. Yeah, no. And apparently you're you're never supposed to leave that or whatever, but she liked the lifestyle. She just didn't like being a servant or yeah, a slave for that Yikes. man. Yikes. If she if he wanted her to be with other women or whatever, she had to do it. Oh yeah. And he, that's what I was like, no. Uh -uh. No way. But it, it just they they had to ask permission from her partner, from oh her master. Gosh. And it was just really strange. That is odd. And I'm telling you, when I found out, I was no like, way. what? How does this work? And because I wanted to know. Oh, yeah, that's me. I'm curious about and it. And she's like, well, let me show you. And she pulls out this box from under her bed. And she they called them their toys. But it was like whips, chains, feathers, candles, things like that. There was no, um, there wasn't any sex toys per se. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. You know, there wasn't. The, the norm. Yeah. It was all stuff that they would just do like outside the body. It was just really, it was really weird. It, it was weird. weird. And then she got with a furry and that got real weird. Oh. So. <laughs> so she has her fetishes, which yeah. is great. If you like it, I love it. Yeah. I say that all the time, but don't be harmed by it. And it right. sounds like in that other relationship, like she there's was. harm. Yeah. There's harm there. And it's okay if you want to be submissive. Yes. But to have someone tell you without you being able to say, no, I don't. I don't feel comfortable with that or I don't feel safe with this person. Well, apparently they don't get married, but they sign an agreement that they will do it. That's like, mm -mm, no, mm. I'd kill that man. Yeah, no. No way. I would not have lasted The long. first time he wanted me to do something, <laughs> I'd be like, well, I'm out. It's just, I just, this was fun. I'm, I'm going to go now. Just yeah. let me pack my box of random But it's interesting to know what it is thrills people mm -hmm. or what they like. Yeah. Like you said, the swingers. Like, I'm not a swinger and I don't think I could ever be a no, swinger. I could never. But it's interesting to see people mm -hmm. that do that because that's such a, I ain't doing that. Mm -mm. I don't share. No. Ever. No. Like, that's not a thing that I would be on no. board for. And I, and, and the couple that took me, they're actually divorced now, by the way. Because that's another thing. How, it how, never ends well. Yeah. I can't imagine how that would be. I mean, I know there's a couple that I, I actually grew up with the, the woman, mm -hmm. and there was a group of them. And then her, Someone else's wife caught her and, and that wife's husband by themselves uh -huh. somewhere else. Right. And I mean, it was a huge thing. And, you know, they all worked it out. Actually, I think that other couple might be divorced now, but her and her husband are still together. But that's a big no-no, I guess. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, it, I mean, I'm thinking, well, if you enjoyed that person, you may want to hook up with right. them outside of the mm -hmm. time. Yes. And if you build like if you are hooking up with the same like those couples who just kind of swap or whatever, someone is going to catch feelings like you cannot be intimate with someone over and over and not form some sort of attachment to them unless you're being made to like that. <laughs> yeah. Any other example. But yeah. But you, if it's you know, same, yeah. if it's the same person and you obviously enjoyed their company because you were all friends probably before this started, if you're over and over and they're in your space and you're talking to them about things. You are going to form a more intimate relationship than it just being about yeah. hooking up and playing, if you will. And so it almost always ends in divorce. And the only time I have ever seen it work out, and I'm, I'm going to go back and clarify. So on the swinging, like they may, they would ask him, like if they wanted, to, like if they wanted me to do something, they would be like, "Hey, is your person open to doing anything?" And they would have said yes or no. But you have to, like, then they have the conversation. So if he would have been like, yeah, she's free to play with, you know, then whoever it was would ask me and we would have had a conversation and I would have been able to say yes or no. It was not like a, oh, yeah, hit it. Like, let's go. That's what I was. I was <laughs> no. I was going to ask you that. So, yeah, no. you know, a man and woman, they take you, you're their mm -hmm. guest or whatever. He goes to the man and was like, well, you know, can we play with her? Well, OK, yeah, she's into it. Then they come and yes. ask you. Then okay. they come and ask, they would have asked me and been like, are you willing? Do you want to? Whatever. And my answer would have been hard no, because this is weird. Yeah. But he yeah. was, I was like, don't you dare leave my side or say, even if you're joking, even if you want to see my reaction, we ain't doing that. And yeah. he's like, you got it. Like, I'm right here all night. And so like, it was, it was fun though. And it was just, cause I am 
such a voyeur and not even about watching people have sex, which there was a room where everyone's just having sex in the glory hole and there's all kinds of things happening. And it was, whew, I'm just such a watcher of people. I was fascinated. And maybe that's what I would consider myself because there's a lot of things like I am not doing that. I'm not into that. But what's it about? Yes. You just want to know. I just am curious. It's like the things that you look at that just amaze you and you're like, what the? Mm -hmm. And then you just keep watching, not because you want to do it, but because you just need to understand. I want to know what you and and like with swinging and those other things, I, I can I can see why some people would get on board, you know, their their sex life is down. But, you know, the the couples that I know of that this has lasted because I've dealt with a lot of swingers and people in poly type relationships in my clinical work is if someone is really incapable of having sex with their partner anymore, maybe a medical condition or something has happened. It's almost always medically or they just have been traumatized some way. Maybe there was an assault or maybe something else happened and now they just want nothing to do with sex, but they don't want to deprive their partner. So they allow these other things to go on with very hard, straight boundaries of it is just sex. It's never with the same person over and over. Like you can, you know, it's this often you don't get to just go out and like be free with them and make these decisions without my consultation. So there are times that, you know, people can come to an arrangement because of something going on within them, but they don't want their partner to not be able to have that physical connection with someone so they can allow it. But that still usually doesn't end well because the partner realizes what they're missing with who they have. And it's just, it's rarely is it good to bring other people in your relationships. And I think you see this, you know, I've, I am a sister wives watcher. Like I, we know I, we know I watch the trash TV. It just shows, cause you can watch those shows and see the dynamic shift as they bring other people in and as their intimacy changes. And, you know, they may have married this person because they were on deck and the family thought they should and whatever, but then they meet someone who they're truly attracted to, who they truly enjoy the company of and have the spark with and now this person is getting all the attention whereas their original partner or partners are not and it you know that jealousy comes up all of those things so it's just really it's a really strange dynamic when you get into that and it's kind of the like cults and things like that when you're having people abused in the coercion style which is what cults usually are and and even some of these other ones you know it's it's that abusive coercion to get people to believe yeah. what they're doing is the right thing and what is expected of them and what you need to do. And then sometimes they're so deep in it and then those things come up that they know the consequences of not going along with it. So now they go along with it. But it's, again, that coercive abuse mm-hmm. where they know there's repercussions. They know that this is going to happen to them. And so you see that those things change and, you know, there's a lot of religion brought into sexual abuse with some of the cults and these leaders that are out there that are having sex with young women or young men or whatever it is. They believe that it's what God is asking of them. If they were raised to believe in that way, then this person is the representative of God. And so, you know, there is a lot of of ways that that happens to people and There's a lot of victim shaming and survivor shaming because, well, you should have known. Why would I know? Like most of the time they're children that this is happening to. But even adults can get sucked into that world like the Nexium cult. And although those were young adultish women that that were in the the does that were being sexually abused by the other women in the group and the men in the group in these things. They believed it was the right thing to do at the time. And they believed they would be harmed if they left. And they believe, I mean, it's the same with some of the sex workers out there who have the pimps who, if they try to leave, they're going to find them and they're yeah. going to hurt them. And and there are safe places to go to leave these things. There are protections out there, but a lot of them don't even know, especially when you get into some of the third world country cults and some of the others where they're not allowed to watch TV or have access to internet or have like, that's, I mean, I mean, yikes. Like, yeah, they don't know all the things uh-uh. that a person like us would know 
watching the TV. They're completely sheltered. Mm -hmm. So they don't know. And then they put fear in them. And fear will make you do a lot of things. Absolutely it will. So that's a scary place. It's a scary thought. It is a scary place. And, you know, if you have been a victim of any kind of sexual abuse, there is lots of organizations out there. Rain.org, R-E-I-N-N.org is a great great resource um, for the LGBTQ plus population. There's the Trevor organization. Like there's a lot of resources. There's a lot of shelters. There's a lot of ways to protect yourself or get out of the situation you're in. And most likely you are not hearing this, but maybe your family members are and they can protect you because with abuse comes isolation. And that's why they don't have TVs. They don't get phones. They don't get access to the internet. They don't Um, you know, get to hear certain things or watch certain things and they don't have access to their family members because the family is usually like, this is not okay. We need to get you out of here. They send law enforcement to do welfare checks and they show up and the people are like, yeah, we're good here. We're good here. Because what else are they going to say? Right. Like in that moment, you're not going to be like, help me. I mean, there are occasions where that has happened, but very rarely because that person is either truly believes they need to protect or they're so scared yeah. that they're not going to be like, yeah, that's happening. Get me out of here. Cause they don't believe that any help will come. And most likely it's because they've been told that right. by the abusers, by the people that the other people within the, the cult, cause it kind of becomes a pyramid scheme within cults and things and religious cults and, and communes or whatever you, when you call them, it becomes kind of a pyramid scheme where, you know, if you stay close to the person, then you don't get as much abuse, but you've got to abuse other people. It's a, a trickle down situation. There is help and support out there. And if you feel like your family member is in danger or they're in one of these relationships, like we've talked about, where you see it going south, everyone is not on the same page, you know, these other stories like, oh, so and so, well, he was out with, with her without the partner or I was talking to them and she didn't know that they were together. He didn't know that she was out with him or whatever it is. You know, it's one of those things where you go, okay, listen, this isn't working anymore. Y'all need to have a very serious conversation or somebody needs to needs to go because this isn't the lifestyle that you wanted to lead or that you thought it would turn out to be. Yeah. And that's where we see a lot of separation when it comes into this is one person's really enjoying this life. And the other's like, yeah, this isn't what I thought it would be. I thought it would be every now and then, or I thought it would be just for fun to spice it up just to get, you know, just to get our engines going for each other. And now it's turned into something else. Right. I could see where one of them would definitely use that against Mm -hmm. the other one to get what they want. I'll tell everybody you're doing this. Yeah. You know, because a lot of the lifestyle, like I said, you for the true swingers clubs, there are clubs out there that are known to have this population there and you can probably find something but for the true clubs and the true like the bdsm stuff all of that you're signing releases at swingers club you cannot take a picture while you're there anywhere within the inside of the club you can go outside and take a picture if the other person's cool with it but you cannot take any pictures while you're there you can't disclose you can't do anything you're not supposed to tell where the location is to other people like it's very protected in their community for those that want to be protected in it which Mm -hmm. makes sense and i'm fine with it because there are a lot of haters out there who would target individuals that they knew were living that lifestyle and if it's the lifestyle for you and you're safe and you are truly being unharmed unless you unless you like that hey but you know you might be getting uh, never mind. you might be you might be into a little harm <laughs> which is okay too pain by choice is is fine but if it's not pain by choice if you are being coerced or abused or told with without an option that you are going to do these things with other people and I mean you know I always joke that 50 shades of gray would be a felony if it happened in a trailer house not a mansion it's true <laughs> like it's, but it's true it, I mean <laughs> there was some abuse going on there seriously mm-hmm. I mean she liked it but still she liked it but then the emotional abuse that came with it yeah you know we saw that side of it and that's that happens more often than oh, this is just so exciting and I'm going to be whisked away out of it. Like if it would have happened in a trailer house, it would have been a whole different story. It would yeah. have been a, a Dateline episode. You're absolutely correct. <laughs> it would not have been. You're right. Mommy porn. You know, no, right. It, it and that didn't, Fifty Shades of Grey didn't phase me. Mm-mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some people were just like oh, appalled at the things he did. I'm like, what? Okay. Yeah. She's choosing that. Yeah. It's not Saw. Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's not it's not that bad. She's set it up for it. And hey, listen, a little rough every now and then. I mean, 
I ain't gonna turn it down. Yeah, she liked it. She liked it. Hey, we all do every now and then. At some point. At yeah. some point. But not all the time. Like you're not most most people do not enjoy it all the time. Right. Like, sure, the movies all showed the man pushing the woman up against the wall and making out. And when it's by choice, it's hot. Yeah. When it's not, it's rape. That's like, right. It, it, well, you're right. Absolutely. There's a fine line. Yeah. So. <laughs> you're right. Oh, geez. <laughs> it's true, though. So, yeah, it's um, it's one of those things that, you know, again, if you like it, I love it. If you are happy in it and it's fulfilling your needs. Go forth. Yeah. Enjoy. Furries and all the, if it's your kink and it like feet, whatever, you know, there's a website for everything out there. That's true. Which means there's other people that like it. If there's a, like there wouldn't be a website if there's not enough people in the world that would enjoy it. That's right. It's a group of folks. It's a group of folks. Whole clan. And if you like it and you are happy and safe and finding your people, by all means. You, you need to be in control. Absolutely. If you're not, if you're being forced, that's mm-hmm. a problem. It is a problem. Yeah. And, I, and I think that's what, you know, that's what it boils down to is yeah. if you are the one that gets to say yes or no. Yeah. Unless it's been agreed upon that you can. No, I'm just kidding. No, you that should you be say able to say no, but no. you really mean yes. Uh, right. Everyone has a safe word. Yeah. <laughs> Use your safe word. Yeah. Dude. Pineapples, bitch. <laughs> Use your safe word. <laughs> Use your safe word. It's one of those things that it, it may not make sense to a lot of us when we see it, but I want to see it. Like I said, I want to I want to understand it or I may not understand it, but I want to see the dynamics of it. I'm probably not going to sign up for it. I most likely would not sign up for a lot of the things that are out there. The fetishy, super fetishy things when you get on the far end of the spectrum. Yeah. But, you know, I want to I want to understand it. Yeah. I want to watch it and see it. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting to know what makes people tick or, you know, what makes what how that excites them. Mm -hmm. There's nothing exciting about watching my partner be with someone else. I ain't doing it. Uh Uh-uh. No. Not doing it. Mm -mm. And I don't want to do it. No. You know, I'm not I'm not like I'm not made like that. So and I know some people that are just totally okay with it. Mm -hmm. There are some men who will sleep with women and their mothers. Mm -hmm. And that is horrible. Mm -hmm. It's horrible. But they're okay with it. I don't get it. I don't get it either. I don't understand. I think it comes from a place of non-commitment. And it goes to cheating and things like that, too, is a cheater is going to cheat. Like someone who cheats is going to cheat. It has nothing to do with who they're with. And it's, you know, that's why people will be like, you did it to the last one. They're going to do it to you. And then they end up doing it. And they're like, no, because they love me so much. They would never cheat on me. And then they end up cheating on them, too. It's because a cheater will cheat. It's because something inside them is broken. They need that fulfillment. They need that joy. They need that validation from someone else. And it has nothing to do with how good your relationship is. You know, I've had people come in for therapy and they have these great relationships and they will tell you, my partner is the love of my life and I, we do everything together and we have fun, but I want to go have sex with other people. And their sex, they have a, a pretty good sex life according to them like yeah the sex is great with my partner but I need to get it from somewhere else I need to go out here and seize that and I and it's just something broken within them that they need that validation it has nothing to do with you and if they are a cheater you're not going to change them until they say I've got to change this now that takes me to something Mm -hmm. my Mm ex-husband he um you know was a cheater Mm -hmm. but even without I mean when when we weren't together and I tried to be friends with him Mm -hmm. um he would tell me about all these different women Mm mm-hmm and it finally dawned on me one day. I thought, you know what? It's not, you just need that to feed your ego. Mm-hmm. You need them to make you feel better about right. yourself because he's a horrible. I don't want to say he's a horrible person, but he's a horrible person. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Sure. I don't. I used to think that it was just the drugs that led him to be the mm-hmm. way that he is. But you know, even when he's sober, he's not great. Right. All the time. Mm-hmm. So you know, I've finally. You know, just realize, okay, uh, I'm trying to see the good in this particular person. And you just, sometimes there's just not really that much. And it really sucks. Mm -hmm. It really sucks. But that's what I thought. I thought, you know, it's not about anything else except for the fact that you need to feel good about yourself. Mm -hmm. So you're out here having sex with all these women. And I personally feel some men. And it's just to make you feel better about yourself. Yeah. 
it's nothing to do with, I mean, even if he was with someone else, you know, sometimes, and I've said it, cheating is not because they don't love you. That's right. They don't respect you. Mm Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, I never, I never understood the cheating part. Be, I, and it's because I don't need to be out there having sex with right all these different people. But when you do or whatever, mm-hmm. okay, I just don't understand how that feeds you. But I get it. Right. Yeah, I just don't feel it. Yeah. And, and knowing that it's not about you. Like, and sometimes we don't see it until much, until later, until we're not with them and they're out there just doing all the hood rat shit. And you're just like, oh, it actually wasn't about me. No, yeah, right. I wasn't doing anything wrong. I'm not not good enough for you. It's it's you. Yeah. You're broken. Yeah. But you made me feel broken. Yeah. Because you out here cheat on me and then making me feel less than. Right. And then, you know, we get to the point that, you know, you're a narcissist. So it's yes. all going to be my fault anyway. Of course. So, you know, but yeah, when you look back, mm-hmm. it's like, oh. Yeah. Okay. I was blinded to a lot of shit. Mm-hmm. Now it's a little bit more clear. Yeah. Because so. it don't start off that way. Right. I mean, you know, I always make the joke that they don't start off calling you the C word at dinner, which my ex would love to do that to me when he was especially drunk and we would be out somewhere and I would say something, you know, rational, like maybe you shouldn't have another drink. He would (laughs) just call you the C word. Pretty much just that I was a controlling C word and I needed to just zip it. I'm like, got it, heard. But that was toward the end where I'm just like, fuck yeah, I don't fucking care. Yeah understood yeah you know whatever yep, i got you got you um so yeah it was just one of those things like he didn't start off that way you know right. they of never start not. off that way no. that's why you know when people say i would never be in an abusive relationship i'm like i'll hide and watch mm-hmm. but when you say i will never again i will believe you yeah a thousand percent because every red flag you're just like nope i'm out that's how I am now. Used to it was like, oh, here's a bouquet of red flags. I'm loving it. I love the garden. Come here. Let's get married. <laughs> you know, but not now. Now I'm like the slightest little thing now. Uh-huh. And I'm like, nope, bye. Can't do it. Right. You're like, this person was terrible and abusive or whatever. Then this one, I don't like the way he chews. I'm yeah. out. Yeah, done. <laughs> I, I just, I I don't like the shoes you're wearing. It just, it just, it's just, you get to that point. Uh-huh. I was so happy to be at that point. And I thought, yes. well, that may keep me. Mm-hmm. You know, I might miss out on somebody great because I don't like this one particular thing that they do. But you're not, I'm not, you're not going to play mind games with mm-hmm. me. You know, we're not going to do that. Right. And, you know, and I have a child and you just can't. No. You just can't trust people. No. You know, so it's, it's definitely. But I'm like, I'm okay being single. Yeah. As long as my daughter's okay, I'm okay being single. I'll be all right. You yeah. know, it gets lonely sometimes. Sure. And then I have people that I talk to and then it's like, Ugh, what's the <laughs> point? You know, this is going nowhere. So but, you know, I guess it's um mindless entertainment sure. sometimes when you just, oh, yeah. you're just talking and, you know, flirting around with somebody. You know, mm-hmm. I have a few of those like Jay calls it my roster. That's right. You know, I have a few of those and I'm good with that. You got to have your hotation. Yeah. Hotation. <laughs> Never heard that word. I love it. Love the hotation. Gotta have the hotation. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I love it. And it, and until like you said, until it gets old, and then you're just like, Bleh. yeah, like I don't even want to waste my time anymore. It's not fun for me anymore. Yeah, <laughs> like, I yeah. know it's not going anywhere. This person is not going to be someone in my life. Yeah, nah, I'm just gonna slowly let that disappear. I had this one guy. We've been we went to school together, right? He's a super sweet guy. His wife passed away, and he has kids. And so we got together a couple of times. You know, like a year and a half mm-hmm. after she passed away. So we had a couple of fun nights, you know. And then I, I was like, we were both kind of thinking it was gonna go somewhere. And then sure. like I have my kid, he has his kids, <laughs> and now we now it's just like, I mean, we were we talked every day, you know. Sure. But and it just fizzled out. And um, he he asked me one time, he's like, I didn't do anything wrong. Did I? I said, no, did I? And he's like, no, I just <laughs> I don't have the energy for it. It's like, I care about you. We've been friends since we were kids. Right. I just don't have the energy for it. I said, you know what? Neither do I. So now it's like, hey, how you doing? How's kids doing? <laughs> right. You know, or if we see each other, we always speak. You know, the kids speak. Sure. It's, it's cool. It's cool. But I'm like, dude, I love you to death. But I, you're right. I didn't have the this energy it. for it either. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. if it would have been like if it would have been something that could have been something, you would have both probably had the energy for it. Yeah. But you both knowing like this is good. And like we probably could have a relationship. Like, yeah. yeah, we could make this work. But it wasn't like there were the, the big tingles and missing them when you didn't talk to them. Oh, and yeah. That. And you're yeah, just like, yeah, 
okay. Yeah. It just not you ain't it. I ain't yeah, it. That's Let's right. Be friends. That's right. I have a lot of friends that way. That you start out like talking in the this could be something sense. And then you both realize, yeah, but you're still friends. Lately, there was a man. I had no idea he was asking ab- about me. And we were friends. Mm-hmm. And he asked me to be a side person. Oh. His wife would know about it. Oh. Because they allow each other to do that. Okay. Okay. And I was like, I can't do that. I can't do that. Right. She may allow that. But for, until she come to me in my face and was like, yes, you can do that. I allow him to do that. Right. And then I don't want to have that conversation with her. So I'm not <laughs> doing that. You're a nice dude. You're a handsome man. Please don't, d- please don't DP me. Sure. You know, and he did. And then at the same time, like, I really, you know, I like you. You're a cool dude. I really like your wife, too. Yeah. And then they separated. And so he's like, you're going to let me take you out now? No. I like your wife. Right. Still, that, that part has not changed. You know, so I'm like, I'm, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I, I like your wife. Well, they've recently gotten back together. Okay. I'm friends with both of these people on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And I think that they've been together all these years. They've got three kids. I'm like, you guys are great. All their kids are little, you yeah. know, they're playing ball, doing fun stuff. And, you know, I messaged him. I was like, dude, I'm so happy you and your wife got back together. I really hope it works out. And he's like, well, that's just weird. No, it's not. No, it's not. I didn't consent to doing anything with you in the right. first place. But I think it's great that you and your wife are trying to work things out and you have these kids. Stop letting each other sleep with other people and yeah. your problems might yeah. go away. Let's shore that part up. Let's yeah. go ahead and stop that shit. Stop that. Because a part of me was like, you can't tell me your wife allow that. Mm-mm. Because that's just not the norm. And even if she does, why is she? Yeah. Is it because she doesn't want to lose you and you've probably made the statement? Mm-hmm. Listen, I've got to I've got to do these things or it's just going to like, but we can stay together if you just be all right with it. I mean, she's like, OK, you know, maybe it's that uh, maybe there's something in her that doesn't feel good enough. Right. And so she's like, OK, if I let him do this, then he'll love me more. We'll be OK. Da, 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 da. Oh. It's never going to end that way. If I have to be in a relationship like that, you can. Oh, kiss my... hell no. Yeah. Not doing it. Hard, solid pass. I hate that. <laughs> and it's not that they they don't openly say that. Sure. So they're manipulating you mm-hmm. and they know it because mm-hmm. they know your personality. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, they start out being wonderful and then yep. they figure you out. They figure you out. And they know how to make you do shit, how yep. to get you to do things. I'm, I'm not into that. That's why I said no mind games. I'm not into nope. that. I ain't doing it. They know your soft, squishy parts. They know how to poke and twist and manipulate and... And where you are insecure, they're going to target that. And so, yeah, it the, the wife allowing that to happen, I don't know what her reasons are, but it's probably not good ones. That's what I was saying. It's, it's not a positive thing. No. Or. Like, oh, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of money involved in the, in the relationship and they probably just have an arrangement. Like the, truly you live your life. I'm going to live my life, but we're going to keep all this together because if we don't, it's going to be terrible and it's going to be bad on the kids and. And financially, it's not going to end up well for either of us. So let's just be good with this. And maybe she truly doesn't care because she doesn't want him. Like, because I think you, I think you would get to a point in a relationship where you don't want to have anything to do with them. Especially no, but, not sexually if you're out there getting it in with a bunch of people. Wouldn't you want to have a little bit of happiness for yourself? That man ain't making you happy if he's no. out there with all them different women. And maybe she does have someone who is making her happy. Because there's some people who don't care if they're in a relationship, who don't care if they're having sex, who don't. Like, they're just, maybe that's her, her mode of operation. Like, she's good with the security, and he's good out there just YOLOing. Maybe she's got her a man somewhere that we all don't know about. That's maybe right. he lives maybe out so. there with him. I mean, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. We don't know. You know, it, it, so there may be some of that where she is happy and or she doesn't need because some people don't need a intimate partner relationship. Like they're just built different. Like it's where you get, you know, the, the asexual people who you never known to be in a relationship. You never know because they don't need that part. Their brain is just built different. So maybe that's her. And she's good with the security of it and keeping the kids safe and doing the things and living the life. And if he wants to go out there and do that, she's good. If you like it, I love it. Again, if you're happy with whatever situation you're in, but if you're being coerced, if someone is manipulating you, if they're saying, well, if you don't do this, then I'm not going to love you. If you don't do this, I'm not going to be with you. Cool. Don't be with me. Deuces. Kick rocks. And if you have that little voice in your head that says, oh, I'm probably being manipulated. 
if that doesn't go away, Mm -hmm. you're being manipulated. Yeah. Trust your gut. It's hard sometimes for us to listen to ourselves because we don't want that to be the truth. Right. And I've been there. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I know how that feels, Mm -hmm. but you know, you got to venture, but trust me, you'll be happier. Be way happier. And learn to be alone. And it's hard to be alone. Yeah. Like you're right. It's I'm good with being single. Would I prefer to have someone in my life that makes me happy and meets my needs? Sure. Yeah. A thousand percent. Am I going to settle? No. Right. Nah, I'm good. That's right. You you <laughs> know that you can be alone. Uh huh. You don't have to have that person. I'm with you. It'd be nice to have it. But yeah. if you don't, if, because if it's not the right person, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. You, it's just, you know, just don't do it. And we're too old for that. I, like, I've, I'm just too old for that. Yeah. I'm not going to allow you in my life just to have someone in my life. Yeah. I, agree. I don't have the energy. No. Like you said with the, the one you're talking to, where it just kind of fizzles because, ugh, like now it's work. Yeah. Like if it feels like It shouldn't like be work. like that. Yeah. Especially not the beginning. Yeah. No. We ain't doing it. <laughs> ain't crossing that line. Let's just stay like we are. Yeah. I'm good with it. So let's talk about your ex. And we're going to roll... We're going to roll into episode 41. We're going to have two episodes. For my producer, Jay Lindley, I'm Leslie Ross. Thank you all for joining us. Please send any questions or comments through the website, heytherapist.com or email help at heytherapist.com. They may be featured on the show anonymously. Hey Therapist is an SEOK radio production and is for your entertainment purposes only. Thank you for joining us. Make good choices.